Let's cover a few different examples of what's going to happen if our check valve is a stick between the outdoor and the indoor, the differences between the two modes. The first we're going to talk about is the outdoor check valve, whether it's internal or external. If that check valve was a stick in the open position, in other words, that check valve will not close. It stays stuck in the open position. In air conditioning mode, what's going to happen? Pause the video, think about it, and then reply. Hopefully you're back, you thought about it. If we're in air conditioning mode, we're condensing the refrigerator in the outdoor unit from a vapor back to a liquid, subcooling that liquid, and we should be bypassing this metering device, sending that liquid refrigerant to the indoor metering device where it will then be metered. So in the air conditioning mode, if this check valve was stuck open, you would never know because it's supposed to be open in the air conditioning mode. So everything's gonna work normally. But what happens when we go to heat pump mode? Now the winter comes, we reverse our cycle, now we're in the heating mode, we're down here. What's gonna happen if that same exact check valve is now gonna be stuck in the open position? It's still stuck open, pause the video, think about what's gonna happen. In this mode, we're now condensing the refrigerant in the indoor coil, so it's changing from a vapor back to a liquid. We're subcooling that liquid. We're bypassing the indoor meter device. We're sending that liquid refrigerant to what should be metered at the outdoor meter device. So if that check valve is stuck open, that refrigerant is going to bypass the meter device. Remember, it's supposed to be metering. We should have a pressure drop across here. But if that check valve is stuck in the open position, the refrigerant is going to bypass it like it's not even there. What you're going to see is your head pressure is going to be much, much lower because we're not building pressure on the high side like we should. You're going to see that the suction pressure is very high because it's letting all the refrigerant just flow, flow right through it. You're going to see very low subcooling if you're able to get subcooling on your liquid line, and you're going to see it very low super because we're flooding that outdoor evaporator coil. A lot of times this gets misconstrued. People think that, hey, the compressor is not working because my head pressure is low and my suction pressure is high. They immediately blame the compressor. Sometimes people will blame the uh, reversing valve, thinking that that's the problem. But really, if that check valve outside is stuck in the open position, we're going to be flooding that outdoor coil, and that's going to be a problem. Head pressure low, suction pressure high, a low amount of subcooled liquid, a low amount of superheated vapor, that's going to be where we're going to see that issue. So hopefully you got those right. Remember, it's just me and you. Nobody's here to see if you got it wrong or right, but you're thinking about that process. So this is if the outdoor check valve is to stay stuck open. But what happens if the outdoor check valve stuck closed? Is it stuck in the closed position? We're gonna start in the heat pump mode. If this check valve was stuck in the closed position, in other words, it will not open, something's preventing it from opening. What's gonna happen in heat pump mode if it's stuck closed? Pause the video, think about what your answer is gonna be. And let's look at the whole cycle. If we're condensing that refrigerant from a vapor back to a liquid at the indoor, we're sending liquid refrigerant to the outdoor metering device where it should be metered. So if that check valve is stuck closed in heat pump mode, you will never see a problem. It's stuck closed. We're metering refrigerant like we're supposed to. So we'd never know there's going to be an issue. But what happens when we switch to air conditioning mode? Now in air conditioning mode, we're supposed to be condensing that refrigerant from a vapor to a liquid, subcooling it and we're supposed to be bypassing that meter device. So what happens in the air conditioning mode if that check valve is stuck in the closed position? Pause the video, think about your answer, and let's see what you came up with. That check valve is supposed to be open in air conditioning mode, so if it's stuck closed, we're then gonna be trying to meter the refrigerant into that liquid line. In other words, this line's supposed to be high pressure refrigerant going in this direction. So if our check valve is stuck in the closed position, it won't open, we're going to have a pressure drop across this metering device that we should not have in air conditioning mode. That means that this liquid line is going to have low pressure, and now we're going to start having another restriction at the indoor metering device, and our suction pressure is going to drop very, very low, and our head pressure is most likely going to go up very high. You're going to see a high amount of subcooling. You're going to see a very high amount of superheated vapor. You're going to think that there's a restriction. It may be tripping on high head pressure, but that's what you're going to be seeing. If that check valve sticks closed, you're going to notice it in AC mode. If that check valve is stuck open, you're going to notice it in heat pump mode. So that's the difference between your outdoor check valve sticking open and closed. Now let's take a look at our indoor check valve. In AC mode, if our check valve is to stay stuck closed, pause the video, think about what happened if this indoor check valve bypassing that TXV was to stick in the closed position in AC mode. Pause the video, think about your answer. 
if you look at our refrigeration cycle, we're supposed to be bypassing the outdoor metering device. We're sending liquid refrigerant through the liquid line towards the indoor metering device. Our check valve should be closed. So whether that check valve is stuck closed or it's normally operating, you shouldn't know because we're forcing the refrigerant to go through the metering device. It should not be bypassing. It should, the check valve should be closed. We're forcing the refrigerant through the metering device. We have a pressure drop. We're absorbing heat inside. But what happens in that same scenario? We have this check valve right here and it's stuck in the closed position. Now we're going to heat pump mode. That check valve is stuck in the closed position. Pause the video, think about your answer. and let's see what you came up with. In heat pump mode, we're sending the hot gas to the indoor, we're rejecting the heat, going from a vapor back to a liquid, a subcooled liquid, and we're supposed to be bypassing that metering device. So if that check valve is stuck in the closed position, we're gonna build up a lot of high head pressure on this side, we're gonna have a pressure drop right here across that metering device. That means our liquid line is gonna be low pressure instead of the high pressure we need. We're gonna go to our outdoor metering device, we have another restriction, so our suction pressure is gonna be very, very low. Our head pressure is going to be very, very high. You're going to be see a very high amount of superheat, a high amount of subcooling, but that's where you're going to see that issue with that check valve stuck in the closed position. It should open in heat pump modes. Let's go through another example. What happens if this check valve is stuck in the open position? It's stuck open. It will not close. It's stuck in the open position at the indoor TXV. What's going to happen in the heat pump mode? Pause the video, think about your answer. Let's see what you came up with. In heat pump mode, it should be bypassed, like it's not even there. So if it was stuck in the open position in heat pump mode, you would never know, because that's what it's supposed to do. The refrigerator's gonna bypass either internally or externally that metering device, go around it like it's not even there, and continue sending that high pressure liquid to the outdoor metering device. But now what happens if this check valve is stuck in the open position and we put it into air conditioning mode? Pause the video, think about what's gonna happen, think about your answer, let's see what you came up with. So in air conditioning mode, we're condensing that refrigerant from a vapor back to liquid, subcooling it, rejecting that heat outside. We're sending that liquid refrigerant to the indoor meeting device where we want to have a pressure drop. So if that check valve is stuck in the open position, the refrigerant's not gonna be forced to the metering device. It will allow it to go around the metering device like it's not even there, meaning we're not gonna have the pressure drop we need, which means we're gonna be flooding that indoor evaporator coil with liquid refrigerant. That means we're not gonna be building the head pressure we need to in this high side. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna see that our superheated vapor is very low because we're flooding the evaporator coil with liquid, very low amount of vapor, so our superheated vapor is gonna be low. Because we're letting all this liquid flooding to the evaporator coil, we're gonna see that our condensing coil is gonna have a very low amount of subcooling, very little liquid refrigerant built up in the outdoor unit because it's all draining past that metering device. You're gonna see that your suction pressure is way higher than it should be and your head pressure is going to be way lower than it should be because there's no metering device acting that's causing that pressure difference to be high on this side and low on that side. In that same scenario we're going to see people blaming the compressor or blaming the reversing valve thinking that that's the problem. Really if we have that check valve stuck open that's going to be where your issue is going to be. We need that check valve to stick in the closed position. If you want to test to see is it the compressor or is it that check valve, simply put it in heat pump mode. If it's working great heat pump mode, bypassing like it should, we put it in air conditioning mode, now we're not building head pressure, we're not having the suction pressure we know. Well, if that compressor is building pressure on the high side in heat pump mode, but it's suddenly not doing it in AC mode, start looking at that metering device. Start looking at that check valve. Does it have the check valve in there? Is it, is it the metering device installed in the correct direction? Is the check valve external? Is it internal? These are the things to look for. Let's see how well you did. Go over this as many times as you need. If you're taking a quiz, it helps if you draw this refrigeration cycle in both modes. So when you have these questions, what happens if this sticks open? What happens if that sticks closed? You can look at it and see what it's supposed to be on two dimensions and start thinking about your answer. Well, if this was to stick open, what would happen in this mode? Or what would happen in this mode? And it helps you think about what that answer is gonna be. And you can look at the choices and see which one of those answers fits best with what you've drawn out. Hopefully that helps. Never stop learning. Have a great day.